The Woodcock Johnson Four. Hi, this is Raina. I'm going to be doing my presentation on the Woodcock Johnson 4 evaluation. It's an IQ test. I'm going to be going through my keynote slide presentation and then jumping in with a little video of me here and there just to do some further explanation. Let's get started. So what does a test? This test measures general intellectual ability and is broken into three parts, cognitive ability, academic achievement, and oral language. Let's look at the cognitive abilities section of this test. There are 18 different versions of tests and each intended for different purposes. Tests one through 10 are the standard battery and 11 through 18 are the extended battery. These sections are not based off of things that a person has already learned in school. Um, skills tested in this section are comprehensive knowledge, long-term retrieval, visual spatial thinking, auditory processing, fluid reasoning, processing speed, and more. the different types of cognitive assessments within the cognitive assessment test. So tests one through three are brief intellectual ability tests, and the score is built from comprehension knowledge, fluid reasoning, and short-term working memory. Tests one through seven test general intellectual ability. Tests one through 10 include all of the clusters and functions described above, and additional information such as the following clusters comprehension knowledge, fluid reasoning, short-term working memory, cognitive efficiency, and GFGC composite. You can read a little bit more about this if you pause on this slide. Take a second to pause in this section of the video. You can take a closer look at the test interpretive clusters within the cognitive abilities testing table. Here I've placed a link that will take you to a page on YouTube that shows you an example of a cognitive abilities test. I would have played it right in my uh, PowerPoint presentation, but I wasn't quite sure how to do that while recording. Um, please take a minute to pause the video and watch a section of this video. You don't have to watch the whole thing as it is close to 50 minutes long, but you'll get the general idea. All right, so that was kind of complicated. So let's do a quick recap. The cognitive abilities test is actually a group of smaller little tests that all fall into the category of cognitive abilities. Cognitive abilities is one section in the Woodcock-Johnson full entire assessment battery. Does that make a little bit more sense, hopefully? Now let's take a look at the test of achievements. Just like the cognitive abilities test, this test is broken up into 20 subtests. This test focuses on material that would have been learned in school. What achievements test on? The achievements section tests on reading, mathematics, writing, and across domain clusters. You can pause the video to take a closer look of all of the subjects sections, but as an SLP, you'll want to focus more on the cognitive abilities test that we mentioned earlier. So I won't take the time to go through each one of these sections individually. Here's a clip that you can click on to take you to a YouTube channel that shows you an example of tests of achievements. Again, I wasn't sure how to put the YouTube video into the PowerPoint slide that I was making, so go ahead and pause the video now and click on the link. This one's a little bit shorter, um, so go ahead and watch the whole thing. Moving on to the test of oral language, this section includes 12 tests of measuring they are picture vocabulary, picture vocabulary, <laughs> oral comprehension, segmentation, rapid picture naming, sentence repetition, understanding directions, sound blending, retrieval fluency, and sound awareness. The oral language test aims to gain information about a child's or adult's oral language, broad oral language, oral expression, listening comprehension, phonetic coding, speed of lexical access, and vocabulary auditory memory span. Just as you did before, go ahead and take a moment to pause this video, click on the link below, and watch the short clip regarding the oral language test. So after reviewing the oral language and the achievement tests, I hope that things are starting to make a little bit more sense. Overall, you have the cognitive tests, 
the achievement tests, and the oral language tests. Each one of those three categories is a group of tests. So the oral language isn't just one test, it's a group of small little tests. The achievement test is not just one test, it's a group of small little tests. And the cognitive test is not just one test, it's a group of small little tests. When you're going through an assessment with your student, you're just gonna go as far as they're capable of going and then stop. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find a basal and a ceiling rate for your child. So the basal rate is the their baseline, the lowest ability they can do, the lowest rate they can do and get the questions right every time. And your ceiling is where you max out. They really can't go much higher than this. So when you're testing, you're going to ask your child you know, six questions, and if they get all six questions in a row, you can move on to that next level of difficulty. If they are struggling to answer those six questions right, then you're probably gonna stop right there in your group of testing. Hope that makes a little bit more sense. This is a really big, complicated uh, assessment battery, and I'm trying to break it down as well as I can for you. All right, so let's break this test down a little bit more and answer some of those questions that you might have. Who? takes this test. Anyone between the ages of 2 and 90 can take this test. What is the test? The test is an intelligence test. Where can the test be taken? The test can be administered in schools, psychologists' offices, and other testing centers. Type. This test is a paper and pencil test. Why do people take it? It helps teachers determine learning disabilities and create learning programs appropriate for individuals. It also helps teachers identify gifted children and adjust their curriculum accordingly. How long does this test take? Each individual section of the test averages about five to 10 minutes. The whole assessment can take upwards of four and a half hours, but it's dependent on how, a child, how far a child can go and how many clusters are tested. Many people do this test in sections and people don't typically take the entire thing in one sitting just because it is very long. Um, what languages are this, is this test available in? The test is available in English and in Spanish. Psychometric data. The WJIV or Woodwork Johnson 4 test as a whole was very focused on psychometric quality. When purchasing a WJ4 test, all the required materials will be sent to you. These will include, but are not limited to, a testing booklet for all three sections, handwritten booklets, scoring booklets, and a pencil. So let's talk about some strengths that this test has. This test is based on very strong normative data. The makers of this test put a lot of time, energy, and money into making sure that this test was not only normatively strong, but also valid and accurate. When testing this assessment, 7,416 participants were used. Of these, 664 were preschool age, 3,891 were in grades K through 12, 775 were college students, 2,086 were adults. Of these people, 100 geographic locations and communities, as well as 46 states, are represented. Another strength is that this test is broken into sections that can be resumed at any time. This makes up for its extremely long length. It can be used and modified for different age groups and languages. These languages include Spanish and English. While this test is very strong, it does have some weaknesses. One of these weaknesses is the fact that it's only available in Spanish and English. This excludes all those who do not speak one of these as their first language. The test is also incredibly long and laborious and is typically not completed all at one time. Therefore, a lot of effort must be put in to administering one of these tests to completion um, to students or adults taking it. 
Um, another weakness is that this test was not normalized in a population outside of the United States, and therefore you should not use this test with people who are from outside of the United States. Um, this type of test does not identify disability. Um, it only says that there's a, a disability present. So further um, investigative work needs to be done to figure out what the disability is. This test only identifies that there is a disability. Um, another weakness of this test is a weakness that are in all um, intelligence testing and that it doesn't include creativity as part of intelligence, which we all know is a very basic part of intelligence. Cultural considerations of this test. This test was not tested outside of the United States and therefore should not be considered culturally appropriate for those who are living outside of the United States. This test is available in both English and Spanish, and this test was normed throughout 100 geographical diverse communities from 46 states and therefore is con considered culturally considerate for cultures found within the United States. All right, so that is all that I have for you. I hope that everything made sense, but if it doesn't, feel free to email me um, and I can try to answer whatever questions you might have left over. This is a very interesting, but very complex, complex standardized test. There's a lot of moving pieces to it. So I understand if you're a little bit confused, um, but basically to break it down one more time, um, the Woodcock-Johnson 4 test is an intelligence test and it's broken down into three categories there are cat there are there's the category of cognitive testing the category of achievement testing and the <laughs> the category of um oral language testing which i just struggled with right there um each one of those categories is broken down into smaller subcategories that does further intensive testing this test has been highly um, norm, uh, normatively standardized and um, is very accurate and highly valid. Uh, the company that built this test and put this together has put a lot of work into making this the highest standard of tests on the market. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little presentation and have a good time avoiding the plague.